my task today is to talk about something that is close to my heart as an educator. Throughout my life, I have faced a lot of adversities in learning. Coming from a poor family and having been raised by a single mother with three children but no stable income, getting an education was not easy. I spent my high school years studying under the light of a candle because we had no money to pay for electricity. But with God's grace, I was able to graduate from high school and obtain a scholarship grant from the Commission on Higher Education, which paid for my tuition fees. Another organization called the Haro Archdiocese and Social Action Center, or JSAC, gave me a monthly stipend. To further help with my expenses, I worked as a student assistant, a tutor, and basically anything that I was capable of doing. I went through leaps and bounds just to make ends meet. When I finally graduated from college and started working, I thought that this is it, the beginning of a new and happy life. Never did I imagine that I would be facing my greatest adversity. This time, it was a battle of myself against myself. To say that my first few years of being a teacher was difficult is an understatement. People had certain expectations from me because I graduated as a summa cum laude and as an outstanding student. Well, I failed to meet most of these expectations. I was angry at myself and that affected my relationships with my friends and my colleagues. I distanced myself from all the communities that I was once a part of, from Tosha to TOSP and the Ayala Young Leaders. I avoided reunions and everything that reminded me of those experiences. I did that not because I thought that they were not good for me, but because I felt unworthy of the title as an outstanding student. Little by little, I was losing the passion that I once had for teaching. So I started my master's degree with the assumption that this will help me regain my passion for teaching and learning. But doing so just made things worse for me. During the first year of my master's program, I skipped a lot of classes. I would turn in substandard work and would not put much effort in my classes. It even reached the point when one of my professors told me that if I miss one more of her classes, she would drop me from her class. My early 20s was probably the lowest point of my life. In college, I advocated for the least, the last, and the lost. In my early 20s, I was the one who needed to be saved. I was lost, and I did not know what to do. Some of you might also be going through similar experiences right now, especially in your academics and careers. How I wish I can tell you that there is a certain mathematical formula that can immediately solve all your problems. But sadly, there is none. What I can share with you, however, are the things that help me bounce forward. I know we all have different personalities. We have different beliefs and principles in life. What worked for me might not work for you. But if you think that it can, it is my pleasure to help and share these things. First, I found inspiration from the kids that I was supposed to inspire. A few years back, I was assigned as an advisor to 50 grade 8 learners. During that time, I was also doing my master's thesis. And part of that was developing instructional materials called Mathematics in a Box. Whenever I had breaks from my classes, I would squeeze in some writing for my research or I would be making the materials. My students who were also having their breaks would usually gather around my table 
and would ask me a lot of questions about what I was doing. What inspired me during that moment is that they took interest in what I was doing. So during our casual conversations, I would explain to them the research process, what a thesis is, and what I was doing with my thesis, since probably this is their first time to learn the research process. What I was thinking that what if these casual conversations would affect about how they per perceive research someday? Those moments reminded me why I went into teaching, to help these human beings reach their highest potentials. And I don't know why, but somehow that fueled the fire in me that was once lost. And from then, whenever I would feel down or disheartened, I would rem remind myself why I started. This is for the kids. And although things may be difficult, I had to go through it. Next, I found happiness in doing the small things. When I was in college, we used to spearhead these programs for the community as part of our activities in the circle of mathematicians in the Christ Youth in Action. When I started teaching, I stopped doing these community activities. And that contributed to my feeling of being lost because these activities were a big part of who I was. One day I realized that helping others do not need to be grand or big. It can be done in small ways. If I can make this world a better place for a colleague who is struggling with Microsoft Excel, then I will do that. If I can make this world a better place for a student who needs someone to listen to, then I will gladly listen. And when we make this world a better place for others, one person at a time, no matter how small, we also make a better world for us to live. Also, I was blessed with amazing friends who inspired me to be the best version of myself and to learn new things. The teacher in pink uniform, as you can see in the screen, is my friend, Mom Sherry. She is a MAPI teacher and an excellent dancer. When we first met, she told me she hated mathematics. And I also told her that I hated physical activities. We were already friends for more than a year when this picture was taken. So we have had a lot of conversations already about each other's interests. We were setting up for an exhibit in school and I asked her to help, help me arrange the mathematical investigation posters of my students. So this is a picture of my friend who previously said she hated mathematics. Having a conversation about mathematical investigation with the head of the mathematics department. These are pictures of me who has always hated dancing, doing TikTok videos with her. Our friends and our colleagues play an important role in our lives. Unconsciously, we adapt their traits and values. So we must always choose the right people for us. Who we are is a reflection of the people we surround ourselves with. That is why I am thankful to have met amazing friends and passionate colleagues who helped me discover my renewed sense of purpose. We may argue sometimes and have disagreements, but at the end of the day, we know that we will always be there for each other. When I finally discovered my renewed sense of purpose, another adversity came, and that is the pandemic. My usual sources of inspiration were now limited to the conversations in the computer screen, often interrupted by poor internet connection and other external noises. Learning is no easy task, especially during these difficult times of the pandemic. When the lockdown started last March 2020, we were still in the middle of the semester in our grad school classes. 
there was an announcement that classes would be canceled for two weeks. This is actually our picture during the last day of the face-to-face -face class. However, the situation got worse and we knew that we were never coming back. We immediately shifted to online learning. It took us all by surprise and so there were no preparations. All of us struggled for quite some time. We learned these different online platforms and thankfully our professors got creative in delivering these lessons despite the challenging times. Now, almost a year after that, we are still on online learning. Last Thursday, I read this article from the Daily Guardian saying that the Philippines has the longest closure of schools in Asia Pacific. The, the article also cited UNICEF Philippine Chief of Education. He said that the prolonged closure of schools could have a long-term effect on children. And the longer the, schools, the school closure is, the more severe would be the impact. I am also a student in this new normal. I can attest to how stressful learning in the time of the pandemic is. It is the same content, but everybody must understand that the situation is very different. Come to think of it, I am already an adult and I have been studying for almost all of my life. Yet, I have never felt stressed like this before. And honestly, it has taken a toll on my physical and mental health. If I experience these things that I am already an adult, how much more a high school student who is in a stage where friends and social activities play important roles in his life? How much more a kindergartner who needs play for his holistic development? Schools are much more than just a place where you learn how to factor a polynomial or how to prove that triangles are congruent. School is the totality of all the experiences that you have. Of course, there may be some who are more comfortable with distance learning, but you know that there are still those who struggle with this type of modality. To the adults who are watching right now, think, of, uh, think about your fondest memories in school. Think about it for, for a time. It might be the time when you and your friends shared this delicious bowl of arroz caldo or this plate of pancit canton during recess. It could be your high school prom where you had your first dance with your special someone who is now your wife or your husband. It could be that group hug that you shared when you and your thesis mates finally defended your thesis. Now imagine that you never experienced all those things and instead you stayed at home and answered a bunch of worksheets. Can you imagine what that would feel like? That is what learning in this time of the pandemic looks like. This is what our kids are going through right now. So I asked a few teachers about how they cope with the challenges of the new normal. Here are their responses. Again, I know that we deal with challenges differently and these are just mere suggestions. I just accepted the fact that this is what the education now looks like. Even though it is difficult, I try to give my best every day, just like what I would do in a face-to-face -face setup. And of course, I ask for help whenever I need it. I do four kilometer walks every day and I refuse to think of work during these walks. I also have a reward system for myself, like after a long day of work, I find a way to watch movies or to read. Before, I also had a gratitude journal. If I am stressed and I have a lot of problems, I enumerate the little blessings. We must celebrate things more than before. Just like what St. Therese said, do small things with great love. That's why we should keep on celebrating and giving more value with what we have right now. I think what helped me the most is rest and relaxation. When I feel tired, I allow my body to rest 
so that I can have the energy to face the challenges. I need to have a proper mindset. I have to stay motivated for the kids because all of these sacrifices, all of the sacrifices of our teachers are for our children. There are a lot of things, this one is for me, there are a lot of things that I learned from these past few months and the greatest of which is to be grateful to God for everything that we have and to always take care of ourselves. Two weeks ago, something, uh, something happened to me and I needed to be rushed to the hospital immediately. I was alone when that happened and for a brief period of time, I thought that that was it. This is the end of everything. I, I was scared and it was fear that I have never felt before. Thankfully, God was there to guide me and he gave me the second life to take care and to cherish. And of course, people who have loved me since then. As I end this talk, I would like to leave you with these words. If you are going through silent battles right now, know that you are not alone. Remember that you are braver than you believe and stronger than you see and smarter than you think. Thank you.